Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we're going to do the last part in this claw hammer forging series and we're going to do some ornamentation of this claw hammer. Now I've already taken the liberty of saving you the trouble of watching hours upon hours of boring grinding at a grinder to take and make sure that I get everything nice and true and square and all the hand filing that came after that. So now what we have going on here is pretty simple. I'm just laying off material with a scribe and I've darkened out this hammer face or the, the side or the cheek, if you will, of the hammer itself with a piece of permanent marker or just a little bit of permanent marker. And all I'm doing here is just making sure that all my dimensions are roughly the same and this will allow me to mark this out on the other side as well. By the way, this little handy tool that I'm using here, I picked up at the local Home Depot, but I'll put a link in the description down below for it. It's essentially a caliper of sorts, but it has become one of my favorite tools in the shop for marking out things accurately. Uh, you can get a fine degree of detail and it reads both in metric and imperial. So you gotta like that. So here I'm just making sure I've got some really good lines scribed in here. Uh, before we get going. But essentially what I'm going to be doing next is we're going to take and after I get my lines scribed here and everything's good to go I am going to start chasing in some lines here. Now obviously if you're making a claw hammer for yourself there's about a thousand things you can do for it. You don't have to necessarily ornamentate the claw hammer itself but this year I'm just doing a little bit of a chasing demonstration as I go. So find yourself a good stool and settle in and we'll get started. Now I am taking and making sure that the banking of my chasing tool is aiming towards the eye of the hammer. And this is going to take and segregate off a section of material. So this is just kind of like glorified chiseling if you will. But the purpose of this chiseling if you can't tell, it's really cold in the shop. That's the reason for the shaky hands and everything like that. You know, it's a, it's a pretty cold in the shop. I'm actually holding the chisel quite lightly, henceforth why it fell out of my hands. But uh, I shake anyhow on a daily basis, so it's no big deal. So all I'm doing here is I'm running down this butcher. It's this one, a one-sided butcher, and I'm going to run it down both sides like this. Later I'll come back and do that again for a double time. This will allow me to have a double set line, which will leave me a little section in the middle that I can actually put roping into. So you'll start to see that here in this next clip. So I'm going to speed this up. This is what it looks like after I've done put in the other line. As you can tell, this takes a lot of hammer work, but it can produce a really nice and keen result. One other possible variant of this, if you don't have a good chasing tool on your hand, if you have some files and you care to do more filing than anything, uh, you can do this just as well with a file. Although it might take you a little longer to get the line straight across and to get what you're wanting. But we will come back in here and clean up some of this again with a file. It, chasing generally se seems to me to be a little bit easier. So here we go, we're getting all these lines chased up. And then we're going to take and break out the file and clean up any little miss hammer blows or marks in the grooves with the edges of the files. Being very careful not to grind down what we've already chased. We just want to get those really nice and cleaned up. So I'm switching over to a little needle file to round off those a little bit. And this will give us that really nice clean work. So the next step in this process, after I finish chasing the other side, as you can see, once again, I'm just transferring what I already had on the other side to this side as well. And you'll see me chase it here. I was just checking it out, making sure everything is good to go. And you'll see me go ahead and chase right along on this thing here in just a moment. But had to run, get a little different chasing tool there. And we're just going to town. And you can see this is, you know, clearly sped up like crazy. 
Now, at this time, I didn't have my copper jaws in the vise, so you can see the hammer kind of, you know, shaking around quite a bit. You can see that little hammer head moving. Uh, you know, it looks like it's really moving in this time lapse video. It really wasn't moving that much to the naked eye. You know, it was shifting a bit, but this can show you how much deviant you can have on that. So, yeah. So after we get that portion done, now we're going to go ahead and remarker this whole thing. And we've got to do this in order to take the glare off the material so we can see very clearly when we strike a line down these roping edges here. This portion is where we're going to actually come in and we're going to chisel a whole line. We're going to chisel a line across it and just kind of move down incrementally in the same amounts each time equal parts and that's going to give us our chased in roping now this part here you definitely cannot do with a file as your you know you, there's nowhere to file so you definitely have to take and have a chasing chisel for this and this is a dual edge chisel or almost looks like a really tiny slit chisel if you will that I am making these lines with and this is a long long process of doing this you know let me tell you but it is but it's definitely worth it you just have to take your time with it and you know work from one end to the other and try not to take and bottom out the chisel on the face of the hammer or into the bottom of the cut that way it looks more natural like a rope that has just been laid up there this is a really great element to add to any sort of hammer or anything that you have a face or something like that or something that you want to border in it's just a really great way of doing it. So here's the other side. This time I didn't paint it. I just went ahead and went for it. And I did get it a little uneven on this side because of that, but that's okay. It's handmade. Or at least that's what I'm telling myself. So there we have it. Go back. We're going to clean and crisp up those lines. And yeah. So you can tell how well that looks. One of the final things we'll do before I heat treat this and stuff, I like to remove off all the, all the rough edges. And I suggest you to do the same. Uh, this will help in the heat treating process for you not to develop cracks or form anything like that. So after a lot of good cleanup work with the file, uh, this is what we came out with. Obviously, we still got to hang it on a handle and all that jazz. Uh, but, you know, you guys have seen that before. So anyways, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And like I always say, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.